My dear friends, you can always realize that the, the weeks of the calendar year are quickly passing and that the liturgical year of the church also is passing quickly because it's at, in these Sundays of, of worship that the scriptures presented to us are always about the fulfillment of God's promises, the promise of eternal life. As we sang in the psalm, you are our inheritance, O Lord. And so it's looking at the time of fulfillment of what we inherit as God's, God's people through the redemption of Jesus Christ. And so we listen to Scripture, Old Testament and New Testament, helping us to realize and, and meditate upon the call of the gospel. It's quite common for people to fear the unknown, and that, in a sense, is what we're talking of. Whether that means a new venture that we're about to undertake and, and we just don't know, or simply walking around a dark corner, there's always some element of fear. And there is nothing that seems more daunting than death itself. Yet this is something that every person faces, and indeed every creature. And yet when we as Catholics speak of death, we are speaking of life. There is something about a final judgment or the end of the world that we can find particularly disturbing. Yet, as I said, both the Old and New Testament readings that we hear today, in them we find hope and comfort in contemplating an eternity with God. We heard in Psalm 16, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices my body too abides in confidence because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faithful one to go to undergo corruption. You will show me the path to life, fullness of joys in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. My friends, in Mark's gospel, we hear Jesus tell his disciples but of that day or hour, no one knows, neither angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. These words most likely were disturbing to Jesus' followers. Even though we are told that his elect will be gathered up, the idea of the, of the end is difficult to imagine. Yet what the Lord really wants for his people is to be prepared, prepared every day, every hour. If we live as true children of God, demonstrating faith, hope, and charity with our thoughts and our actions, with our words and our choices, we have nothing to fear. We need to use the time that we have to live the way Christ asks of us. And if we live mindfully with the purpose of honoring, loving, and serving God, we will be doing what God wants. If we love and respect our neighbors, caring for those who need help, we will be doing what God wants. If we choose to belong to the Lord and follow him, he will know us. He will call us by name and bring us home forever. There is something of a marked difference between the vision of our final destiny, which you find described in the book of Daniel, and that of Jesus in the Gospel of Mark. When the triumphant Jesus comes, he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the end of the earth to the end of the sky. The final moment will be Jesus' worldwide embrace of people from every corner of the earth. In this dramatic embrace, in this dramatic speech, Jesus proclaimed 
that the end of the world will not come until the good news is proclaimed to all the nations. The gesture of the risen Christ at the end of time will be the same as he always had. It's the loving embrace of Jesus who healed the sick, fed the hungry, and had compassion for the lost. I'm reminded of Pope Benedict's reflections on our final destiny in his beautiful encyclical entitled Spes Saudi, which means saved by hope. He notes that while there are saints whose salvation seems assured, there are some human beings so consumed by evil that we fear for their fate. But most of all, most of us fall somewhere in the middle. We are ordinary sinners. And noting the, the Catholic doctrine of purgatory, Pope Benedict notes in that encyclical that purgatory will not be in the manner of torture by burning flames, and yet that's the popular imagination that fears, that we fear. But the fires of purgatory are actually the fires of Christ's love for us. As we stand before the risen Christ, at that moment, his love for us will be so that it will intensely purify us from anything that is without love. This echoes also the very famous saying of St. John of the Cross, a mystic, who said that at the evening of life, we will be judged by love. It also fits the words of Jesus to his disciples on the Mount of Olives, that our destiny will be a divine embrace. Who of us can predict our future? We hope for the best, and we trust Jesus' own words as he encourages us to believe, to believe that will be the case. My friends, Christ is working with us to help us get there. Just trust that you are redeemed, that we are redeemed by Jesus, and he promises to be with us in heaven just as, as he is with us now.